single-handedly as Sniper, so I think Alliance is pretty happy with this. Night Stalker Troll is the secret pick, though, so two heroes that can dive on the Sniper pretty easily, but if they're if they're held away a bit, if Alliance gets some good upfront tanky heroes that can draw aggro, such as like uh, an axe or something, I feel like it could be a really good lineup for Alliance here. Yeah, these two picks for Secret, they're kind of face rush picks, but they don't have good gap closes for the yeah. sniper. I think early on, like that first couple, like the second and third night, especially the sniper before he has big items, is going to be very scared of the Night Stalker. But once you get a few items, you get like a Sanjin Yasha, you get a Mask of Madness, you get your movement speed and your HP. That's where it's a lot harder for the Night Stalker to actually break the distance, even when it's nighttime, just because of Sniper's range. Yeah, it's kind of sad to say that a Mask of Madness and a Sanjin Yasha make you as fast, even when you're voided by a Night Stalker yep. and it's nighttime. Like, it's, I, it's easy to kite. It feels like Secret are going to be going for a gap closer with one of their next few picks, be it like a Storm Spirit, something along those lines I feel it, like needs good. to be there against the Sniper. Mm -hmm. if, but it's very likely it might be banned. You know, Alliance yeah. has an, a second round of banning coming up, so they can take up two heroes they don't want to deal with. Uh, Storm is pretty common as a ban versus Sniper. Um, but if he does squeak through, you can still make it work. You'll just have to adjust your item build. Sometimes people just skip Mask of Madness all, yeah. uh, all entirely. Another and that's, and that's that, a good pick. Exactly. Yeah. A nice block pick and also a great off laner for Alliance in the clockwork. Yeah, another pick that I really like with the Troll Warlord is always the Spirit Breaker. I feel like this hero, as an initiator, as someone to go into a fight, you have ba Battle Trance with him, and suddenly he's a much more potent carry and damage dealer just because of the Battle Trance, if he's yeah. getting a few extra bashes, so... Well... We'll see what's going to be coming up now for the next couple of picks here. Team Secret, it felt like they were very prepared, because as soon as the Sniper came out, they snap-picked the Night Stalk and the Troll Warlord, so I think it's something they were already yeah. anticipating dealing with. I do really like this third band, though. Um, from Alliance, the Magnus, something that uh, S4 has played a lot in the past, of course. Quite good against the Sniper. That's one of several gap closers they could ban out. Um, if they opt out to fourth ban the Storm, what are we left with options-wise to try and deal with this Sniper? I, I think it's already kind of tough because Clock is a lot, the very similar in an axe in a lot of ways, uh, except it's more long-standing. You separate the, the team fight, you segment things. As Night Stalker's going in, you battery assault, you cogs, you keep them far away from the Sniper, and if they do want to go past that, they need to blink past the cogs or something like that. So it's very difficult to gap close when you have a Clockwork initiating first. It pulls all the attention to him, and if you can reflect the damage of Blade Mail and Sniper's on the other side taking shots, it should be a very good draft for Alliance. So I, I really like the Clockwork pick here, and again, like you said, it's also a block pick. It's another hero that's good at jumping on the sniper, so Clockwork is making space while also being tanky and initiating. So Lions actually opt to fourth ban the Lich. Uh, we did see Secret play Lich in game three against yep. Team Malaysia yesterday. Uh, that was a game that they lost, but an interesting ban here, not one that I would have I would have predicted. Yeah, I, Sniper physical damage, I'm wondering if they're planning on picking a hero for load as well. That's going to be very physical damage focused and mm. Worried about how the laning stage may go if a Lich gets through, but depending on where you lane the Night Stalker, normally most of these teams, have, with Secrets being Kuro playing a full position support Night Stalker, so you don't really have a good safe lane support for the Troll at that point if you're getting a Lich with the Night Stalker. Yeah. Night Stalker a bit versatile though, could always just put him in the off lane, do something a little different. Secret will opt to ban out the Jug. The hero's pretty good against Troll. Uh, you can just Omni Slash him, you don't have to worry about blind and all that stuff. So, um, And then if you if you can always break fear and spins and things just by spinning away. And obviously the heal's also really good in combination with heroes like Clockwork. So Jug is just all around hard to deal with in a lot of ways. So it's pretty easy to ban him out here. Most of the other good carries are, are out of the pool, to be honest. But they do have a sniper, so they don't necessarily have to get another one. But I think it's very likely. I don't really see Alliance or Secret changing too much up from one day of losses. Well, one thing's for sure, Secret is going for vision control. You've got the Night Stalker for the night and the Zeus of that ultimate for uh, some keen initiation vision around the map. Pretty well-rounded draft so far for Secret, I'd say. Good mix of damage. Yeah. Whenever I see Zeus, I always think Batrider would pair so well with this. They haven't got their offlane for Zai yet. It's good at co closing the gap against the Sniper in some ways. Yeah. Not amazing, not like the best counter by any means. Uh, it's also going to struggle a bit against Shrapnel and potentially Rocket Flare scouting him out, but it is a hero which benefits a lot from the vision that Zeus can grant, and you've got more than enough damage coming out of Zeus, coming out of Troll Warlord as it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Batrider could work. If not bad, I think Spirit Break is still good, just as a hero that matches up nicely against the Sniper, can synergize well with the Troll Warlord. And the Night Stalker as well, if you want to dive towers early on, it's very easy to do so, because you'll have vision, plus you can 
go for the tanky. I mean, both of those heroes have really high base armors. Both Spearbreaker and Nightstalker are pretty tanky. Yes. So, mm -hmm. and boosted with the battle trance. I mean, Troll Lord can even be farming jungle, and he can still drastically help on those early ganks. And a Dazzle is going to be the pick. It's a support that's rarely picked, but sometimes picked recently. And it's, people have been valuing his weave a lot more. They actually group up to organize for it. That way, they get the big armor buff over the long duration team fights. It can be good against your opponents as well. Offensively, it gives you vision, and uh, occasionally he heals and graves are make a huge difference, especially in this lineup. Secret doesn't have any DOT right now, so even if somebody graves, they can teleport back to home or something like that. So I think Dazzle's a pretty good pick here. He's just got to be a little careful about the burst damage that Secret has, because they have moderate burst damage right now. Yeah, I think Secret, seeing the Dazzle and the Sniper me, I mean, they've already got the Zeus, so there's a lot of good magic damage as well as late game potential there, but they're not going to be looking to go all in on physical damage with this. It could be a tough game for the Dazzle, though. Uh, silences in general are very good against the Shadow Priest. Night Stalker yeah. um, can definitely give him a run for his money if the Dazzle gets initiated on. So it goes both ways, depending on who catches who. That's definitely true. But Clockwork in combination with Dazzle is pretty strong. You can grave him. Yeah. You can use Shadow Wave on him to do a little bit of burst, give him some extra HP difference there. Um, I doubt we'll see too many levels of Poison Touch. The ability has kind of fallen out of popularity. If you're zoning, you usually get at least one, but in the mid to late game, people just don't get it. I've, I've seen a lot of games where Puppy's like level 16 and he just doesn't have a skill point in there because yeah. the skill doesn't really get good until level 3, level 4. At level 4, it does a one-second stun at the end, which is great. It's a seven-second cooldown, but yeah, it takes so many skill points to get to there. It's just better off waiting and using... Shadow and Wave and Grave. Level 1 of Shell, uh, Shallow Grave is kind of a value point, but that ability scales really yeah. well. The range really is the big cool. thing, and especially against the Night Stalker and now a, night, uh, a Spirit Breaker, Dazzle's going to want to sit as far back as possible and still get those Graves off, so yeah. I, I would agree with that build. But I like the Spirit Breaker choice for Secret, and right away, Alliance, without hesitation, Viper, their fourth pick. So one good way to maximize your heal potential is by having somebody that reduces the damage they take in the first place. So if you have a Viper, every time Zeus casts a spell in a team fight, he's going to get hit with Corrosive Skin every time because it's static field. So every time that he casts a spell in a team fight, even if he's not targeting Viper, he's getting slowed and he's taking damage. And since it's being reduced by the magic resistance, Dazzle can compensate by healing that back, and his heal is going to get extra value on that. So Viper's not very good against Troll is one of the downsides because Viper does die decently to a lot of physical single target damage. But if Dazzle's around to help him out and maybe give maybe gives him a weave buff. I think Viper is a yeah. pretty good pick here. I think between the weave, the shadow wave, and Viper just naturally building into a mech Can and then tanky uh -huh. items after that, mm -hmm. he should be okay as far as tank. All he has to do is just survive long enough for Sniper to deal enough damage from the backline. So if anything, Secret would be more concerned about ignoring the Viper and going for the Sniper who's dishing out most of the damage yeah. or taking on the Dazzle. So He's really good against Spirit Breaker too, Viper, because most of Spirit Breaker's damage is magic, and Viper again has magic resistance, and every time Spirit Breaker hits him, he's getting slowed, which yeah. reduces his attack speed, which means less attacks, and his movement speed is lower, so it's harder to chase. Viper's a pretty tanky mid-hero, actually, versus SP, even more so than maybe a hero like Quap, who can blink, because SP doesn't worry about distance gap closes. It's more about killing your opponent before the tower that you're diving kills you, and I think Viper has a good opportunity to defend against that. It seems just like a great Viper game in general. There's melee heroes on th th three of Secret's heroes are basically melee. I put the troll in that camp as well, because yeah. he wants to be going melee range when he's trying to get the, the bash lockdown, so... Seems like a great pick overall. Yeah. I like these final bans. Secret taking out the Rubik. Alliance opting to ban the Bane. I think Rubik could have been great here. The null field against Zeus is always uh, quite helpful. So looking for a puppy hero here. Last pick. Hmm. Hmm. What, what do you think they need? Their team fight is kind of weak right now. I would say Alliance is a bit better. Is Enigma Maybe. way too greedy here? Yeah, I think so. I think they need like a... Because they've got the Night Stalker support, but... Yeah, yeah, you're right, actually. It has to be more of a traditional support. Moran is a puppy here. I don't think it's the best Morana game, though. Rubik is bent, by the way, so... Yeah. Um, okay. It's the Bat Rider. The so Zeus support, I guess. Oh, Spirit Breaker support. Spirit Breaker yeah, yeah. support, I think, most support. likely. Okay. Well, we talked about the Bat Rider quite a bit. Still fits yep. very nicely with uh, what they have here. And Spirit Breaker does work well with that vision-type strategy that we talked about, charging yeah. from across the map, so... Should bode pretty well for the Bat Rider. Secrets disables are pretty weak other than Spirit Breaker Suns, so they're going to have to worry about that. They've got a slow and a silence from Night Stalker and then Bat Rider ulti, but they're not going to be able to fight super often, other than, with the exception of Charge. Charge is going to be really good. So I like the Venge pick in this case because that they only have one stun, really, and now they can counter that, so as long as Ventral Spirit's in a really good position, they can really mess up Secret's initiation here. Mm -hmm. Spirit Breaker's still going to be able to get a charge through, but they've got a Grave to counteract that. So as long as they're not super out of position, I feel like the Alliance draft covers a lot of their gaps a lot better. 
Yeah, and Venge always, always good against the Bat Rider. Secret thinking about who's going to play what here. So still perhaps deciphering how these lanes will come down. A lot of options with how they want to set up these lanes. Yeah, I really like the Viper pick for Alliance. I think that's the X Factor kind of as far as this draft is concerned. Everything else, you've got your Pycat Sniper, you've got your Space Creator in the quirk, but Viper was one of the key heroes for a Team Malaysia's success yesterday. Yeah. It's not the most flashy Ten hero, it's not a hero that you can really... Lane. ...big playmaking hero, but he's just so solid, so stable, allows you to put on so pressure when you group up, and it's so hard to get into it. Right, it's going to cut it because you've also got the Venge to swap them out of danger. Yeah. Yep. I feel like Viper can do really well against a, a Batrider in a 1v1 as well because every time you take magic or a burn damage, you're also reflecting oh, corrosive skins. So, and you can always uh, zone your opponent since you have an orb attack, it just zones them away, doesn't cr draw creep aggro. All right, and with that, we'll hand it over to our casters, LD and Sindarin. Take it away. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is not an elimination match that I expected to see in round one, Sin. Secret or Alliance going home. Guaranteed to finish below Tinker. I, I would not have predicted that. It's a very uh, pessimistic approach to take to... Well, it's an elimination uh, <laughs> match, man. This is, this is where things get painful for somebody. You, you just made Tinker sound like a really bad team there. <laughs> no, it's not. I think most people coming in would have said that they had more to prove. I know what you mean, yeah. Uh, yeah Trying to make uh, me look bad. Typical. Nothing unusual there. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, this was not the match we were expecting to see in the first round, indeed. And going into it, I said after yesterday, for me, Secret are the favorites. They did lose to Team Malaysia, but I think they played a good series. They, they got outplayed by a team that played extremely well, whereas Alliance, they seemed like they kind of, they had a very hard game against IG. It, it was a very one-sided series, it felt like. Alliance had a little bit of hope in game one, but game two, they just got completely run over. It was one of those games where it was less that they lost and more just how painful the loss was, like you're saying. They, they got run over. Luo, BKB, <laughs> that's like a BKB diving the enemy fountain at 25 minutes. That was, that was dirty, but here we go. This game underway now. Game one of a best of three, and already Niqua in a little bit of trouble. He's going to take a charge here. Zai looking for some big body blocks, and is he going to cut him up? No. That clockwork a little bit too fast. So he's able to retreat out. This is, I feel like this is pretty rare it's nowadays like, that one team gets both bounty runes in competitive Dota. Um, but Alliance will grab both of them. They get one on Niqua and they get one on Lotus Viper. Uh, whoops. Uh, <laughs> Calm down. This is a, just I'm very nervous. This is my first cast. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... This is going to give Loda a little bit of a head start in the mid lane against S4. I think Viper versus uh, Batrider is already a good matchup for the Viper. Uh, Batrider, by nature of being a short range hero, will constantly be in range for a poison attack from the Viper and uh, has low base damage too, so the Nether Toxin will very easily be able to get you the last hits in this lane. So I think Alliance are very happy with the start of this game. And in addition to this, they're playing an offlink Clockwork who's currently playing one on zero. <laughs> And uh, the supporting cast of Secret doesn't deal that well with the Clockwork and Lane. Support Zeus and Nightstalker, not the best at keeping him it's, away from Clockwork. It's definitely the weak point of the Secret draft. If they get to the mid game on even footing, they look extremely scary. But you're running three heroes that are not that strong in the laning stage. The Batrider's okay, but it takes a while before he can really get out. Oh, is actually in a lot of trouble here. Uh-oh. Being chased out by Nico. The Battery Assault coming through. They get up a Void. One more tick. Oh, he's just out of range. So close, but the lane not looking too fun for our tour at this point. Only has the three Tango Sinned, and well, let's see, is there any regen here on Puppy? He's only got a single Tango of his own. He's looks like they'll need to be ferrying out some regen, but we are seeing early on Secret struggling a little bit to find suitable lanes. The Viper breaking even with that, but as the Viper continues to level up, generally it gets harder and harder to last hit against him and to stand in lane. It feels like one of those games where Secret may be better off with almost a, an IG style approach from what we saw yesterday where the lanes break down very early around that first night time. You just start going around ganking and, and just constantly being off the map because when they're sitting in lanes, they just have a tough time breaking even. And the one problem with that is Zeus is really not that good of a ganker in the first night time. Generally, your support Zeus at minute four to eight will be, let's say, level three to five, realistically. So. There's no Thunder God's Wrath available. He's pretty slow by nature and doesn't have any complement. He doesn't have any slow or silence to complement with the Night Stalker during those ganks. So I'm really surprised they chose to put this Zeus in a support role. I think it's. I, in I a way, really thought it was a core Zeus. Support. Yeah, I thought so. And it, I mean, it, it is kind of greedy to run a double melee support cast with uh, Spirit Breaker and um, Night Stalker together. Again, especially against a Clockwork, that might have been the consideration that we don't want to run double melee supports into a clock, but. 
I'm kind of nervous that if Zai has a hard time this off lane, can Secret even do anything in the first night time? I don't know. The one thing they can look to do is maybe not the first night time, but the clock or the the Bat Rider can go into the jungle and they can try to give some levels to another hero mid. But Zeus. you're standing against a Viper, so yeah. you get slightly out of position and you're either TPing the fountain or you're dead. As Force got on his four rune. Uh, what else is new? Could be. <laughs> he could be thinking about this. This is the best. Arguably the best hero rune combination in the early game. Bat Rider with haste is ridiculous. You can constantly just... He can actually kill Viper without taking any attacks. He just keeps circling around him with the haste rune very quickly while Napalm is on, and, and Lodo will never be able to turn. too yeah. slowly, yeah. You, you actually can't de deal damage with anything else than the Kurosu skin at that point, but... Uh, it's still a very unlikely kill at the moment for S4, but if he's able to get level 6 before his... Uh, or level 5, all right, as the rune is pretty much expired here, so it probably won't happen, but... Uh, it is, it's very scary playing against the bat with haste and Lota just playing it safe and farming here for now. The, the other hero is great on his pudge, but <laughs> we don't see him too much competitively, unfortunately. Sad to say. Well, and gyro. And gyro, that's true. Gyro Rocket Barrage is extremely devastating. And he, he's definitely a squishier fella. He likes to be able to kite you a little bit. CS4 poke up. Wants to zone this Venge off the bottom rune. Does grab himself a bounty. And let's see. Loda, I'm gonna get eyes on Kurogi here now. They're pretty run Ake. Kurogi's gonna let the rune go. Doesn't want to risk getting caught out. So will in the end be a regen snagged by your Shadow Freeze. But in comes a little bit of reinforcement. Bat Rider joining the fray as well as Zai. Big pile up on Aki. Goes up pointing grave here. Uses it a bit on the early side. The Ancient's even joining this little engagement. Seems Aki may be your first blood. They get the last hit. Now looking for more. Kuroki stunned up. There will be a turn. One for one. And in comes the Sniper. Double Shrapnel. They've got a third if they need it. I don't think they even need that last Shrapnel. And they'll, they'll hold on to it. So ends up being a two for one. But Secret are able to... And the end claim that first blood. Yeah, I still think this is a really good fight for Alliance. The Spirit Breaker charging all the way from the bottom lane. Sure, they get the first blood, but he ends up dying in the process. And now they're going to give Kuroki a little bit of time in this bottom lane, which I think is a good choice. This Night Stalker is going to. I feel like he's going to be a very weak hero in this game if he doesn't get off to uh, get get some. I'm going to call it recovery at minute five, but <laughs> it, it kind of seems like that's what he's uh, he's going to need here. It's not a good Night Stalker game. The entirety of Alliance's draft is actually very good against the hero. I feel and, uh, they did pick it first phase though, so it looks like Alliance were looking to address that problem. Uh oh, Nico in a little bit of trouble here. The rain slow comes out. Not quite enough damage to get that kill in the clockwork. Already level five has the stout shield. Able to survive and now salved up. It's as though nothing happened. Interesting build here on uh, Kuroki. I don't feel like we see this too often. The Tranquil Boots Night Stalker is... No, normally you see the urn and, and just like the, the early boots or occasionally yeah. even the upgraded treads or phase boots, but... It's, it's a very cool a very build, build for roaming, since if you uh, if you have some sort of way of regenerating mana, you're obviously extremely fast during nighttime with this movement speed on this hero, and. Uh, you can like run in and out of fights or well you kind of need some time to reset for the tranquils to be available again But you don't necessarily need to go back to base and you can be a little bit more of a, a presence on the map I kind of like this idea Well in the meanwhile our bottom lane we do see our sniper pushing in a little bit and now a lot of heroes off the map at the moment for both teams actually Looks like two just kind of a calm pause before the storm. It is that first night time now. At the same time, your Night Stalker, not hugely high leveled. He's level four, not too bad for a roaming support. See Lota push out this middle lane. Rather, rather calm play from both teams. Nobody wanting to fight right now, it seems. Yeah, I feel like Alliance are getting the way better of this early game. They've got a golden experience advantage, obviously, from how the lanes are going with the farm. And also just the way that the lineup is, uh, is composed, it seems... Secret aren't really getting anything out of the first night time. We, also, we talked about how it's unlikely, but... We oh, still really should want to. Loda. There's your S4 rune, number two of the game, gets off the lasso. Pulling Loda in deep, he can easily kite him here. And Loda drops quickly to the rotation of Kroki, will end up going down. Good rotation by Secret here to get this towards the end of the second night time, or this first night time actually, as we're already seven minutes in. Yeah, but they needed that. Damn, those haste rooms in the first night. Two They're haste already. Rooms on we're already seven and a half minutes in. On Bat Rider. Ay, ay, ay. Two haste rooms early, really good for him. Um, I think we're looking at a very fast Blink Dagger here for S4. Arguably one of his best heroes as well, has had great success on the Bat Rider, so he really knows what he's doing. Uh, with that kill, he will be getting 
closer to that blink dagger, maybe even a sub 10 minutes could be possible. And this is really what we expect as well from Secret is once the Batrider gets a certain amount of levels, he can rotate to the jungle. Even the troll of Arteezy could look to do that as well. A lineup that has a lot of heroes that need farm, need, need quite a bit of experience, so they're trying to strike the right balance here. The nighttime will end, but Kuroki, not to be thwarted by this, oh, dodges the hookshot. Nikwa, he was fishing, but unable to find the opening. Meanwhile, a wild cow appears. Oh, Lodo a bit too tanky right now. He's already got a completed mech and we're only eight minutes in. You can get a very fast mech if you just get... He has pretty good farm for this mid lane and going for brown boots into mech. I, I like this build a lot on Viper instead of upgrading the boots. I feel like it wouldn't have made much of a difference for his pressure on the lane to have, say, treads or maybe even face boots, which some Viper players like to get. I think brown boots into mech and maybe even not upgrading the boots now and getting your next core item could actually be a good choice as Arteezy will get spotted here by Lodo. And they're going to look to put some pressure here. The Lion's starting to maneuver through the dire jungle. In the meanwhile, Zai farming up that middle lane. Wants to get the nether strike. He's not quite there yet, but he'll have his level 6 suit at this rate. They'll heal the wave. Alliance clustering five heroes at top. They're just, they're just feeling strong. They have their mech. They have the decent levels on the support. They have hook shots. And they're, they're just ready to five man. What is Seeker going to do about this? They really cannot take the fight, so... What they look to do instead is to split push and to stall for now. Yeah, they're pushing mid out with S4 and Kuro's getting a lot of alone time on bottom. I actually think this is pretty good for Team Secret all in all. If, if they lose this top tower and get a good trade off here with uh, some crucial experience and maybe a key item soon to come on the Bad Rider with the Blink Dagger, I think this is exactly what they need in this, uh, in this situation where, like you said, they actually can't fight Alliance 5 on 5 right now, but they're really good at the pickoff game with their lineup. With Spirit Breaker now level 6, Bad Rider close to a blink, Night Stalker level 6, Zeus will be closing in on an ultimate eventually, Puppy currently only level 4, had a really hard early game, but uh, he'll get there. Time is definitely Secret's ally. They have an excellent late game lineup. This is a lineup that at some point you're looking at a potential Agonims for the Night Stalker. Kuroki already a thousand gold pocketed, so could be picking up that early point booster. And that is one benefit of going the Tranquil Boots is you can save a little bit of gold because compared to like an urn or upgraded boots and just head straight into a fast dag. And if he gets that, they get the Zeus level six. Still a bit of a ways to go for Puppy. And you've got a Batrider Blink Force. I mean, you just, it's difficult to get out on the map as well. You think Kuro gets point. Axe first this game? I'm not sure. It's definitely an option, though. I've seen, seen a, I've seen a few support Might Soccer just crush it. I think he can get away with the Midas with how uh, the rest of the lineup uh, works together at this point. Where Potentially. They're yeah. also giving him quite a bit of farming space, so it, it would be a way for to keep him relevant in the game. I think going for the Axe could really backfire, where. He just runs out of steam if they take one or two bad fights. Oh, Puppy, he's trying to be cute at the neutral. In comes Pycat, hook shots there, and down Puppy goes. Secret unable to react in time to save their buddy. The charge gets canceled, and S4 is going to be but he gets stunned by the bench. Mech comes out, they dash him, they push him back with another strike as well, and they bring that mech carrier down. Now Matchka pulled into the middle of the fray. Four heroes surrounding that little venge, and down she'll go as well, a two for one, but it's a core Viper with the mech rushed who ends up falling. Then all of a sudden, it's a big swing of momentum for Team Secret. This is something Secret's lineup is really good at. When when alliance are spread out, it's very easy to just collapse and outnumber the opponent when you have uh, the charge, the Blink Dagger, and Night Stalker popping darkness. Um, they do a really good job here getting two kills for one. Puppy did get killed in the process, but doesn't really matter all too much. Support support Zeus is not actually that much about getting items, it's just about getting levels and, and just if getting level gold, six that's okay. Yeah. That you just have at least the ult for scouting, if nothing else. Same cooldown at all levels, so you should have it relatively soon at this rate. Yeah. And darkness does expire, but natural light tank kicking in, in ten seconds here, and Alliance are looking to make the most of that little window they have to get the mid-tier one at least. We're gonna see an interesting move from S4 as he reveals his blink dagger just to split push a little bit faster. It does not stop Alliance from taking his tower, however. Normally we'll see Bat Riders at least try to catch the enemy team off guard with a smoke, but he just blinks on in. Just wants to slow down the split push and or uh, increase the split push and slow down the five man from Alliance, I should say. And the Lions, well, they, they continue to do look it like they want to do it. Yeah, they're going to show Loda and Equal right in beside him. And the way they've been playing, you got to figure the whole gang's probably there. And well, you were right, Sand. It won't be the, the Ags Rush. He will stop off for a Midas first. Secret are gearing up for a very fearsome late game, though. They're not farming that well right now. If they are given time, the sign up's just dirty later on. 
You've got Darkness, Zeus Hulk giving your Batrider vision, Troll and the Night Stalker to Spirit Breaker, three heroes that go really well with Battle Trance. At some point it gets difficult to deal with them. And while Alliance are putting pressure on this tower, it's going to get difficult with uh, with S4 now. Showing oh, there's a hook on mid. Puppy caught out again. Nequa popping the early blade mount pickup. That's the kill. What happened anyway? In the meanwhile, there's a lasso, but it's on Loda. He's rather tanky. They're going to maybe try another strike of back. I don't know if they can actually take this fight. Mech comes out. They're going to lose one. Oh, Zai tries to charge away. He can't quite do it. The poison takes him down. Now S4 stunned. Another volley of auto attacks comes forth, and all of a sudden, Pablo scores a double kill. Very questionable that Secret chose to go on that. They, they knew Alliance was there, right? They've seen them. They saw position. at least two. I think they saw three. But. So they tried to go on a Viper who has Mech, Treads, and Avenge, and Dazzle, and backup. I don't think That's they knew the Venge. super unlikely. I think they saw the Dazzle and the Viper, and they had seen the Sniper. I actually think just Dazzle and Viper would have won that engage alone. <laughs> at least they would have stalled before the for the team to show yeah, up. They, the tier very, one is still here for the race. That was a very high risk play. And there's something to be said for giving a little space to the team, but in this case, Secret hasn't gotten too much. They do take a tier one top, but it's the the least important tower in the entire game, so not a huge loss. Zion's gonna find a rune. Um, so too will Pycat. This is that stage of the game where second nighttime hits, and you probably want to be sticking together if you're Alliance as much as possible. Don't want to be giving any easy pickoffs to this Batrider Zeus Spirit Breaker trio. And this is when the real challenge begins. Like, this, this nighttime still has half remaining, but then there's also darkness. Can Alliance start pressuring tier twos already? Because I think when we get a little bit further into the game, and they will inevitably have to start split pushing a little bit and defending their lanes on. Um, from time to time, there's very easy to become potential for Team Secret. So this is when Alliance, I feel like their draft is at, the, at its strongest, or during the next five minutes, I would like to see them get a lot done on the map here. But they need to be so careful with their positioning, especially the Venge really needs to not get caught out so they have the counter to the last one. And Secret are always going to have great intelligence because of the Zeus as well as the Batrider. They, they should be able to get some nice vision and potentially find their openings. S4 starting to toy with them a little bit. Chucking a sticky napalm out here and there. Nikwa also playfully pump faking the hook shot, but nobody really wanting to commit just yet. They just want to let Pycat chip away at the tower. Use that revenge defensively behind him. If they go in for the last, so you have an easy swap. You also have a grave and a hook shot. There are three great ways to interrupt Secret if Secret goes in. And as a result, it seems they're not really too eager to take this fight. No. I, I like Secret's decision to give Night Stalker a farm in this situation a lot. They, they they recognized, okay, if we just keep playing him as a support, he's going to become like a non-factor. So they not only give him Midas, but also give him quite a bit of lane farm, and Zai has taken a little more of a defensive uh, support role on the Spirit Breaker. So they kind of uh, swapped the roles around. I think it's the right call here. And Nikwa is going to see Kuroki and vice versa here. Well, it doesn't look like anyone really wants to fight. And Alliance, they take a Tier 2 for free. This is what their lineup needs to do. Yeah, they don't even lose the Next Tier 1. Then. And, well, this might be that point where you start to take out Roche. Hope shot was attempted here, but a bit off the mark. S4 just going to TP away. Now, let's see where Alliance want to go next. They they have a lot of... Even though Secret has the vision lineup, it's Alliance with the big tower advantage right now. They might be able to use this to find some kills. They look for Zai here. Trample coming out to try and get the vision. A secondary trample deployed. Instant stun mid-charge. Nicely played there by Mad, though. He gets lasso. He may pay. There's the Grave. Well-timed. Nether Strike now wasted. S4 going to go down. Assassinate not even needed. Good start here. Team Alliance haven't lost anyone. Mech comes out. Everybody just so durable between the Mech, the Urn Charges, the Grave, the Dazzle Heels. This Alliance squad is not easily put down. In fact, they're all at full health. And they're going to push. Yeah, it looks like Team Secret keep trying to take these fights like 2, 3 versus 5-ish. And I mean, it's understandable that Troll doesn't get involved right now because he's actually really weak against this kind of lineup in this, in this situation. But... They need to wait until high ground and then try to take the fight there. Like, it's fighting right outside the base was a super risky play once again. And it really feels like Troll can't do anything this game. He's walking into cogs. Even if he gets someone low, they're probably getting graved or swapped out slash healed. Sniper is going to sit extremely far back. And you look at Arteezy's farm, he's just not even close to being big enough to, to jump anybody. It feels like a game where he may just have to try to work a blink into his build just so he has some way to get on top of either these supports or even the sniper. The thing it does provide, though, is Battle Trance. And 
when they get levels on both the... But... Especially with the Night Stalker getting farm and the Spirit Breaker closing in on... Well, he's almost level for greater bash. Then all of a sudden those attacks are dealing a lot of that. Nice hook shot from Nico. This is a very easy kill on S4 again. Oh, with Isn't the death of the, the Bat Rider. Bat Rider is it time here? for Alliance to just take this Roshan? S4 on the sidelines for 30 seconds here. Alliance have an opportunity. Will they take it? it seems like for now, Secret are... Just nervous. They don't want to get picked off. They're starting to it's only 8 to 4, but these kills have been important kills. They're leading to a power mid, and now potentially to a road down. So the Alliance will move into the pit. And it looks like the Secret aren't even going to try to contest this. Hmm. I'm not sure if this... I'm starting to think whether this is an X Night Stalker game or not. Like Kuro is going for it. He has shown the point booster and of course is is farming a lot, but what else would you get? BKB? I'm I'm wondering if getting like a, an abundance of vision, they already have Zeusalt, they already have charge, they already have firefly, if they also need the Night Stalker axe, because the problem is not that they don't have vision of the fight, it's that they can see the fight. They just can't take they can't it. walk in. And Axe on Night Stalker doesn't really make you much of a fighter. It's incredible for information, it's really good for preventing heroes from juking you and TPing out. You can always just void them across uh Across trees, etc. But it their just actual feels like fighting power is really underwhelming right I, now. I agree, but it also feels like their their lineup's not really built to do anything else. They they have heroes that are entirely built to find kills. Night Stalker, Spirit Breaker, Bat Rider, and Zeus. These heroes do not really push. Troll's the only one that does, and he's been split pushing. I I, I don't disagree with you, Sin. But what else could you even go for? That's a good question. I I don't know. You I, could get a BKB, but even if you have a BKB, are you really walking into Sniper, Viper, Clockwork? I don't think so. Uh, Maybe you can soak up a little extra damage. Yules. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> you were you were a pioneer before your time. I, I, my I actually don't know. It's it's a pretty difficult. I feel like it's just a bad Night Stalker game to be honest. Like draft wise, they picked it early and it's been counterpicked very hard. So it's like you need so many different things and none of them seem really sufficient. Um, but if they can. I think more than anything for Team Secret, it's just about their decision making so far in this game. They've actually got themselves killed quite a few times on trying to take fights that are just ridiculously difficult. And I think at this point they've learned their lesson and they just play a lot of more split push and try to only defend on high ground. And that is the way to go. Regardless of item build, I think this is the way they need to play the game strategically. Uh, Lions, they're also doing the right thing. The question is, this is a big moment. Can they get the first lane? There's it's your hook. hook shot. Right on the puppy. No cogs coming out. He does get off the blade now, though. Nico pulled in deep. It is a one for one with the Zeus buying back. Now Loda pulled back by another strike. Tower's almost dead. And Arteezy not yet coming to this fight. Still again the tier two in the top lane. They land his eye. He will drop to Loda. Both range core standing strong. They swap in puppy. That's a dieback on your Zeus. And with that, they may just continue pushing Sin. Patrol now returning, but Arteezy, well, he'll try to get something done here on Matt. Sitting back, very far back actually, is Pycat. They charge on the Aachen. Zai looking to rejoin this fight as well. That's a buyback on him too. Engage on the Loda, there's the Grave though. They need potentially a swap, they don't have one. Maybe a Venge stun. Good bashes here for the Troll, as well as for the Spirit Breaker. Arteezy dropping low. Pycat survives, the charge comes through. He needs one more hit, he goes for the TP on. He doesn't get Pycat! What a disaster for Team C. Oh, he thought he had him. And then, in the end, that's two diebacks, and along with that, a couple of additional deaths. The Bat Rider, as well as the Troll, and they came back with the Troll. They're not split pushing. What does Secret even do at this point? They're gonna bring Puppy in. He might just die here to Nikwa. Hookshot is ready to go again. And Pycat's full health again. They have so much sustain with this urn, with the Dazzle, Shadow Wave, and... They're gonna get the first lane to Barrett's minute 21. It feels oddly reminiscent of what IG did to Alliance. Not quite as one-sided, but it's like, we're just gonna run at you, and your lineup is not strong enough to fight us at the 20-minute mark. Already a lane of racks down. Alliance looking good here in an elimination best of three. Yeah, and I had, he even had ages in that fight. So he still has it. They could just go again. Hookshot again on S4. They have the Oh, no mana for assassinate. Looks like that may allow him to survive. That's why he's really trying to find something more here. Does have the last one. He's going to go for Nikwa Insta Swap because Mads just hit level 11. 25 experience above the threshold. Probably would have gotten the grave off anyway, even if they needed it, but just making it even easier for Alliance to retreat out. 
Secret are going to need a miracle at this point. They The game was actually... So this is what's interesting, right? We talk about how difficult it is to siege high ground in this version generally, how uh, most teams are really good at defending. You, you, The Secret lineup actually even has Zeus and Batrider to defend high ground, which are pretty good high ground considerers. And still, Alliance broke the base with a 2,500 gold lead. They got racks. This is just... A way better composition for sieging than Secret has defending. Yes. And the way Secret's lineup usually defends high ground is that Zeus just keeps spamming out spells and then ultimately Static Field starts playing a big role and heroes have to retreat. So you just heal it up with Shadow Wave every time. They don't care. And it's a level 1 Static Field yeah. and a level 1 Zeus ult. It's not even max hard lightning. So, sure, you're, you are you were right, I think, to some extent that support Zeus doesn't need as much as core Zeus, and that's fine, but he's gotten just so little. There's. It feels like a lot of this game is just coming down to the overall lineup just being a little bit too greedy. Too many heroes that need space, need time, alliance, heroes that come online with very little. Venge, Dazzle as the support, even the clockwork offlane, and kind of like how Tinker was drafting yesterday in their, their opening match versus Cloud9, where it felt like for a long time that their supports just brought more to the table. But the difference is this game, Alliance are pushing that advantage a lot more. Yeah, and Secret has worse high ground defense yes. than that Cloud game. They game actually had a good high ground defense. I think it was like Sniper, was it? Clockwork, Sniper, Shaker, Shaker Beastmaster. <laughs> yeah, that was right. They were really, they had really good high ground defense, but. I think in this game, the uh, the Viper pick has really played a very crucial role. Uh, it's disallowing Troll from joining fights, is making it very difficult for Spirit Breaker to do anything. And when you have both Viper and Sniper against all these heroes that need to come in close, you just kite them for days. You cast Viper, you cast Viper Strike on one, the Sniper keeps getting headshots, and it makes your melee cores that need to run in an attack pretty much useless. Like, you saw in that last fight, our team actually got some decent damage out, but... Couldn't get the job done at all. So. There's your hook. Comes through on two. S4 getting caught out. Does four staff himself away. Is there an assassinate? High cat. No, already used it. So nothing left in the tank here. Line's going to continue their siege. And they're up on the high ground. Arteezy just now taking down that tier two bottom. Last time he came back, they didn't win the fight and he died. But well, let's see. Loda up aggressively positioned. Toss out the Viper Strike. That one misses, but he's got the egg. So he can afford to go for these plays. And Sin, how do you initiate? If you go on Loda, you have to drag him out of swap rate, but it's a level 2 swap. They have to go now. Grave. They know Weave is down. That's like the most important thing is that Aki has expended that already. They're not going right they now. Fight into it's weave. game it's time. Like the Night Stalker just not even making his move yet. Has the ultimate. Not popping it. They gotta go soon. Puppy S4 down. is gonna out. die. Kuroki charging oh in. Oh, S4 will go down towards the well. Meanwhile, Kuroki runs into three, and all the while they do find Loda. Cut off the mech. Chain pass. Then the charge through. Miqua, however, surviving. Swap in onto Puppy. They'll make their go on him. They don't even need the Viper. No mech required here. As Alliance confidently push in, that Zeus has no buyback, the Spirit Breaker, no ultimate available. And Alliance caving in a second lane of Rax here in game one. Looking like they might even take the the full game at this rate. It's just hard to see how Secret turned this. Yeah, They've I, already taken their trades. They, they went for the tier two top and bottom. Then they came back to defend and that was Arteezy's big unveiling of his 10 second BKB. It just doesn't do anything. Oh, and another lineup. kill for Pycat with Assassinate. He's now beyond God, like 10 0 and 4. And the snipers, ho ho, and an ha ha, and all the way to the bank right now. This is just a really good strategic win for Alliance. Like, I'm going to call it a win by now. It's going to take like a miracle secret. They're going to try, but Arteezy is going to be on the receiving end instead here, almost actually getting himself into a lot of trouble. A little worried about the lasso. No reason to die for that kill. You really don't need him. Oh, maybe Pat's going to get caught. He is the gem carrier here. He could swap himself down. Nope. There's the blink away. He may have to... Oh, he'll get four staff. Nicely played by Nikwa. And he's still trapped. That will be okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Matt's like, thank you. That saves me it's waiting for the down, four staff. Yeah. So, the thing about this draft is... I mean, we've seen it in play already, how Alliance can just five-man and Secret have a very hard time pushing, but it's like Alliance have taken all the opportunities they needed to, and the Secret has given them, like, a little bit of bonus. They, yeah, been a, couple a few of times extra like, deaths, a few heroes get charging in where they didn't need to. It's, it seems like in the mentality of Secret when they play like this, they have, in this game, they had a hard time accepting that they couldn't fight. They were like, oh, okay, we need to do something, we're losing the map, this is not good. And you understand that they're starting to get like claustrophobic as they're losing all of their towers, but these two team fights they engaged into, like two and three or two and four, two and five, were actually really important. It just gave Alliance some extra golden experience that they needed and some more confidence in just, just pushing forward and realizing, well, there's absolutely nothing threatening us anymore in this game. Well, they're gonna chuck out a rocket. In the meanwhile, another Aegis. This one onto PyCat. Alliance, it's one more lane of ranks to go. There is also a tier two still standing here in the bottom lane. 
but I mean, really, Sin, I, I don't think they even need to farm the Sages out. You just can go right now with five bottom. Why stop? And they've got a 12,000 gold lead. I think they would be stronger than Secret with a zero gold lead as well. That's the problem, right? Yeah. Like, th this, this isn't just, uh, like, the graph is just a number here. It's just the composition of their lineup. And even if they weren't this far ahead, they would still be really far ahead. So I want to say this 12,000 gold lead corresponds to a normal game, quote unquote. Like 20, Having 000. a 20, 25,000 yeah. gold lead, it feels like Alliance are just that far ahead. The one hero who I feel like could really change that equation, if he had farm, would be the Zeus. If this was a core Zeus and he had big items and it was an even gold game, it could be a lot different. But yes. He's, he's the big damage dealer. Spirit Breaker, Night Stalker, they feel very underwhelming in the engagements. They I run into just too many things that counter them and control them and, and deal with them. I think going back to the draft, that's just a... Uh... I feel like Secret analyzed the game wrong with that with that call of putting Zeus on support. Like, yeah, sure, the Clockwork would maybe have had an even easier time if it was two melee support stop, but he had a really easy game anyway. Like, Zeus can't really threaten the Clockwork, can't attack him, because then you just get cogged in and die or get cogged out. Um, doesn't really harass that well on the very low levels compared to other supports. And like you said, Static Field and a high-level Zeus is what could have held the high ground for them, whereas this... The core Spirit Breaker in this game has been pretty much a non-factor, it seems, most of the time. And for the most part, the Night Stalker as well. Yeah, but he had to play support no matter what yeah. the start. And then they gave him farm, which I think was a good call. I don't think Zeus could have really taken that much farm as he needed to get relevant. So it was just too easy to kill at yeah. that point. Yeah. A bit of deboarding here, and oh, Viper's trying to find S4. Then a hook shot comes in. Man, he drops fast. Pie Cat was ready. Fresh, shiny Maelstrom to go with his new Eye of Scotty. Mm. He's laying into Zai. He's diving him back towards the tier force. will kill him off too. Arteezy baby next. Pie Cat. He'll have mercy here. Deal with the creeps instead. As the Zeus all comes out, this looks to be the end. Secret getting demolished in game one. Alliance showing no signs of the battering they took yesterday from IG. They look good here, Sid. Very good. Yeah, this was a really good draft. Really good execution from them as well. They did exactly what they needed to do. Right calls in the right order. Uh, they got a really good start with both bounty runes, they had good lanes, um, found the pickoffs they needed as well. It kind of feels